What's happening YouTube? This is Robert and this video number 11 in my HTML series. In this video, I'm going to go over HTML tables, what those are, when to use them, where to use them, as well as how to build them up and style them, and then create different tables that look different from one another. In addition, we're going to go over iframes, what those are, how to use them, how to style them, and some of the limitations that you might encounter when using iframes. So when and where can we use tables? It was originally designed for web design, but as the internet has grown and become more responsive to cope with different screen sizes that access the internet in different ways, now it's not really meant for web design anymore as far as table elements built into your HTML and using those. Instead, you want to use div tags and use CSS to style up any kind of tables that you want. What we do use it for is emails, and the reason is because the rendering engines in emails are a little difficult to deal with. Each of them are different from one another as far as Google, Yahoo, with all the different email providers, and they provide limited CSS access. You can't attach a CSS document. You're going to have trouble with head tags, background positioning, margin floats and font, and styling it to be a consistent experience for all of your users who might have one or another different email client. And it's a real headache to deal with that stuff. If you look at this website right here, cssstricks.com, it'll be in my description and it'll go over all of that for you. But for now, when you're using emails, you also want to consider designing your content first and thinking about your content and your copy first, because that's going to be important to your users. You may consider sending an email that allows one or the other so it'll try and access the HTML design and if it can't it'll send a plain text version and you have to have both available and then consider an email client like MailChimp they've been doing this a while and they have designs and templates ready for you that have already dealt with this and thought through the entire process and can make your life a lot easier if you're interested in that go over to Google and check that out what do tables look like inside of a table we need a row of data to create columns and in each column you want to have a header and then beneath the header you would have cells of data. Now each cell can hold another table or it can hold any kind of HTML element so a cell is really where you want to put most and all of your content except for the header defining what goes in each cell beneath it. Now that I'm in the editor I want to start by creating an HTML file. I'm going to call this table iframe.html. Now let's go ahead and build up our boilerplate code and call it tables and iframes. Now let's build up a basic table and that way we can get an idea of what we're dealing with. So we have our table tag and in each table you need to start out with the table row and the first row is going to be our table headers. In the first column I'm just going to say header one. Now I'm going to make three different columns one with header one and one with header two and one with header three. Now our next row is going to be the data cells for each header column. So in cell 1 I'll just say cell 1, then I'll say cell 2, and I will say cell 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two more rows by going ahead and pressing Control shift d And now we have our header for each column and then three rows of data for each column. Let's go ahead and save that and take a look. And there you go, now you have header 1 of column 1, header 2 of column 2, header 3 of column 3, and then cell 1, 2, and 3 for that second row, that third row, and that fourth row inside of your table. So the first thing we'll do is put a box around the table, a border around it, and a border around each cell, and that way you can tell where the rows and columns are. How we're going to do that is with style. So now we've got our style tag and we want to target our table, we want to target our table cells and our table headers. And once we've got those targeted, we want to go ahead and create a border of one pixel wide solid black lines. Let's go ahead and save that and take a look and there you go. But right now, it's over here to the left, and I want to kind of bring it out over to the center and drop it down a little. So let's target our table, and what we're going to do is deal with our margin. So you can have four values inside of margin. It goes top, right, bottom, left. And what I want to do is have it about 50 pixels off of the top, auto to the right, zero on the bottom, and then I want to have auto to the left. And there you go, now it's centered in our page and a little bit off the top. Let's make it a little bit more off the top and say 100 pixels. So now we have 
our first table. Now I did create another table to be a little bit more complex and I'm just going to copy and paste that in here. So you can see that we've got our main table. We've got a table row with all of our headers in there. We've got three and we've got five additional rows which contain items, descriptions, and whether the item is consumable or not, true or false and you can see we have our table. As you can see, our headings inside of our table are gonna be centered and bold by default. We have a little bit of space in between each cell, and if we don't like the look of this, we can collapse the cells, and we do that inside of the table. Border, collapse, collapse. Save that, and now we have single lines. For now though, I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out. Let's go ahead and give a little bit of space inside of each cell because it seems like it's a little bit congested. And let's also bring these descriptions over to the left instead of centered. So let's access the table headers and the table cells and create some padding. We'll just use five pixels of padding for now. Now you can see it's not as congested inside of each cell. There's a little bit of space. So now we just target our table heading, use text align left, and there you go. We've got our table headings to the left and a little bit of space around with some padding. Something else we can do is create space between each of the cells. So what we can do is we can go up to the table and we can say border spacing. 50 pixels and now each border is placed at least 50 pixels apart but here's something you should know about this if border collapse is set on the table the border spacing has no effect so let's go ahead and comment out border collapse and we'll call that good and let's also take this down to five pixels but let's say that I wanted one of these cells to span an extra row or an extra column. So let's go in here and create an extra table header called extra and inside of here we can go down to our first table row third cell and we can say call span equals two and there you go you can see this extra space where this header was created and this last cell the third cell inside the first row has gone over to an extra cell space let's go ahead and do the same thing here for the extra row so that we can make the width of our row a little bit bigger we'll go down to watch and make it span an extra row wide and here we go we've got watch in our last row and just like call span this one's going to be row span and we're also going to use two for that and nothing happens why is that well it's because that's where our table ended if we go up to the other table row now when we refresh you can see that we've created an extra row on glasses so what ended up happening is it pushed down and then pushed watch over to the right and in the end the false ended up in the extras column now the glasses item does take up two rows but it pushed out the bottom row into the next column and subsequently each column was pushed to the right one one thing you want, might want to do is put an entire table descriptor to do that we have caption and it must go immediately after table caption has opening and closing tags and i'm just going to say this is my table and you can see there's a little caption up here describing the table now i told you before that a table cell can hold other tables and all sorts of elements so let's do something unique and instead of glasses i'm going to put another table where it says glasses only it's going to be this table i'm going to go in here and i'm going to copy my entire table Control shift v to exactly paste what i copied if i don't press the shift when i press Control v it's a little bit off and to fix that you just press Control shift v and it'll paste in the appropriate way now in our first table, we created an exact copy where the glasses cell was. But one thing that you'll notice immediately is there's a bunch of white space up here. So when we created our second table, what we didn't do is reset the styles and the specific styles that are being affected right now are margin. So we can say margin zero, and now we have zero margin above that. So let's say that we had a table background color of blue. So we go into our table and create background color blue. And there we go, we've got a background color of blue. If we want to affect this table only, we can go into that table and we create an ID tag. And we'll just call it second. Then up here in styles, we can go up and target pound sign second, and we can go in and say background color red. And there you go. Now we've 
can create two different tables and start styling them different although that's pretty ugly the way I've chosen to color it this time so some of the th key things to take away from table lessons here is that you want to use them for emails but not the web be aware of the limited CSS support table he headings come out centered and bold by default but you can switch that with text align left most HTML elements and other tables can be defined in your data cell. Border spacing has no effect on tables with collapsed borders. Caption must immediately follow the table tag to define the table. And the last one I'm going to throw in here is test. So important to test if you can have a Gmail account, Hotmail, Yahoo, Outlook, Mail, App, all of these other ones, you want to have at least the top providers out there. Now let's jump into iframe. Iframes are pretty cool. Um, they allow you to display a web page inside of your, your web page or another web page. This is the syntax. You have your iframe, you have your source of where you want to target, what website you want to bring into your iframe, and some limitations that we might encounter are refusal to connect. So if we try and use Google in an iframe, it's not going to let us, but I have figured out some sites that will, and we can use those. So let's jump over to the editor. I'm going to go ahead and delete all this table stuff here and delete the style tags. All right, let's create our first iframe here. And in source, I'm going to put cssstricks.com. I'm going to put a height of 500 and a width of 80%. Now you can see we have accessed cssstricks.com inside of our web page. If we adjust this to 700 height and 100% width, now it almost looks like it's our website and we can do everything in here that you can do at their website. Now, like I mentioned, a lot of websites don't allow you to connect to them. The refusal to connect is something inside of the document that basically says if the iframe isn't coming from the same website, if it's an outside source coming in and trying to connect, then it's not going to allow it. Go back to 80 and 500. Now, if we create a style tag and we try and position our iframe and try and say margin zero auto like we have in the past, when we refresh, it still stays to the left. So instead, what you have to do is go into the parent. In this case, we haven't created a div tag around this or anything, so the parent is the body, but a div tag works just as effectively, probably better for your particular project. But for now, I'm just gonna use the body. And what I'm gonna do is target body, and I'm gonna do text align center. Save that. What I'm also gonna do in the body is create a little bit of padding, 200 pixels tall. And now when we refresh, our body has created padding, and our iframe is in the middle of the page. Let's target our iframe and create a border around that. And our border is going to be five pixels orange and dotted. Now when we refresh, we have five pixel dots as a border around our iframe. Now you can change the height and the width inside of the actual iframe, or you can come up here and add it inside of your CSS. It makes no difference. For now, I'm gonna leave that. And I'm also gonna take away this frame border zero attribute. It does take away the border, and as you noticed, when we started, it had no border, but then when we added this orange dotted border, it did have a border. Let's comment out the border, refresh, and it does not have a border. If we take out this frame border, it does have a border. Now, if we were to say border zero, it would also take away the border, but instead we chose to have five pixels orange dotted, or at least I did. One last cool thing that you can do is that you can start out by taking out this source here. Let's go ahead and copy or cut that out. And let's give this iframe a name, CSS Tricks. And then inside of the body, we can create a hyperlink and we can paste in that CSS Tricks. And then we can use our target attribute. Inside of our target, we just say CSS Tricks and create a link to click and here's our link to click and nothing inside of our iframe currently but then when we click it loads up inside of our iframe but that's it in this video if you are liking these videos so far go ahead and give me a thumbs up that would be fantastic and i will see you in the next one